folks tell me, how can a known poison that exists in our food supply or medications, and sometimes even in the air you breathe, be totally overlooked as the cause of disease in America? Watch me now and soon you too will know the cause. And welcome aboard, my friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad you're here. I'm uh, realizing in reviewing all the comments, questions, and so forth that we're pretty broad. We, uh, we now have people from a lot of different countries. This is thanks to uh, God TV airing our show. I think we're carried in two, uh, almost all English-speaking countries, um, but I think it's 210 or 220 countries in addition to DirecTV. Uh, airing it here daily, Monday through uh, uh, through Friday. So I really respect and thank them. And how we got together with that network was amazing. It was just, uh, <clears throat> it, it was it was great. It was a, a blessing from above. A friend of mine named Lindsay. Now you'd have to know Lindsay, and I hope she's listening right now. Lindsay is uh, a cytotechnologist. She is an expert in laboratory work. A cyto means cell. So she looks at cells and helps doctors diagnose different conditions. <clears throat> she was in Hawaii with a girlfriend working in a laboratory and uh, she heard me say that, you know, I think even cancer is a fungal disease. Well, they just laughed and laughed and laughed. She said, well, we get cancer tissue in here all the time. I'm just going to prove whoever that is on TV totally wrong. So they took months and isolated all this tissue and checked it. And as it turns out, she contacted me six months later and said, you're not going to believe this. What you've been saying is right. Very often there are fungi growing in cancerous tissues. And I said, duh. You know, I've been doing this a long time. Lindsay and I have become friends. Lindsay sent me this the other day. <clears throat> uh, news. Coronavirus COVID. Tongue has been identified as a new corona coronavirus symptom as per experts. Well, if they're experts, then it has to be right. What are we learning about experts these last years? <clears throat> and Lindsay writes to me and says, I am 99.9999% certain this is thrush from yeast for crying out loud. So I look it up. I do my due diligence. Here's a report that came out, Integrative Medicine Research 2020, September, a few months ago. Tongue features of patients with coronavirus disease 2019, a retrospective cross-sectional study. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, or TCM, has been widely used as treatment of corona coronavirus disease in other countries, certainly, or COVID-19. <clears throat> Tongue features should be referred for diagnosis and treatment of disease in, uh, in traditional Chinese medicine. Therefore, it is necessary to analyze the tongue, which they always do. You go into a Chinese doctor's office, first thing you're going to do is stick out your tongue. The last thing he's going to ask you to do is take your clothes off. The first thing, I want to see your fingers, I want to look in your ears and your nose, I want to see your skin, I want to hear you talk, and I want to look at your tongue. Only in medicine. Results. Here were the results. So they analyzed the tongue features of all these people. Patients diagnosed as mild to moderate COVID-19 commonly had light red tongue with a white coating. And Lindsay says, I am almost 100% certain that this is just thrush from yeast. Folks, you know my hypotheses, and it sticks. Here's the problem. Many of you will say to me, Doug, if those Wuhan scientists, and I know you're bored of hearing this, but for the newbies, I'll tell you, I think the virologists that were funded by our government to the tune of some $30 million or something, in Wuhan, China, back in uh, 2014, 2015, remember they studied COVID in bat bottoms. So they went into a bat cave somewhere outside of Wuhan, these virologists who don't know mycology. They know viruses. They don't know fungus. They don't know that God put a fungus in the intestines of bats that breaks down their poop, right? Guano, it's called. And so they, and this guano breaks down the poop and it falls into the dirt and there it lays until someone causes it to become unsettled. Then you can breathe this stuff and it's very, very toxic. It's called histoplasma capsulatum. The disease that ensues in some people who are immune compromised is uh, histoplasmosis. But this is a fungus. Now here's my hypothesis. <clears throat> These 16 virologists, however much money we gave them, 
went into the bat cave, stepped in the bat guano. They're testing. They took fecal samples from bats because COVID is known to be in the intestines of bats. So they take this, what they think is a virus, back to the Wuhan laboratory. Well, on their clothing, I'm sure they had booties and masks and hats and so forth. On their clothing is now settled all this histoplasma. Folks, if you don't think that genetic fusion exists in nature, if you don't think that the RNA, ribonucleic acid in a virus, the bats, or the virus, coronavirus, and uh, DNA from fungus, fungus has DNA like we humans do, very many similarities between fungal cells and our human cells. If you don't think they can merge and create a brand new hybrid organism, you're wrong. It's been very well documented in my cancer reports that I uh, talk to doctors at meetings about. I talk about genetic fusion, how I think this is cancer. I think a fungus gets on board, it uh, merges with our white blood cells, and all of a sudden we've got a white blood cell that can't recognize fungus or anything else, it's broken. And this fungus protects itself inside the body by growing in a rubbery lump, a lump. Hmm, that's cancer. You're kidding. No, it's non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Could it be an ascomycetus sac fungus? No, no, because we don't know what those are. So no, everything's cancer, okay? If, uh, what's the fortune cookie, John, I pulled the other day? I mean, just amazing. Look at this. Of all the fortune cookies, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> we taped that down to our counter and took that picture. I thought that was rather stunning that I would get that. Bottom line is, Lindsay's right. Because Lindsay now looks at everything from the same eyes as I do. Now, as a certified laboratory technologist, she's one of few called a cytotechnologist. She can't, she can't take, um, you know, a cancer tumor and pull some cells off and see mycotoxins or aspergillus mold or something in it and say to the doctor, hey, I need to tell you something. There's fungus in those cancer tumors. You see, every doctor in the world would question a lab tech that would be that cocky, that bold, to step forward and outguess them what cancer is, right? And anyway, fungus degrades things. They're called saprophytes. It's why your tree's leaves grew brown and then fell off and blew away in the wind. So a fungus, is <laughs> fungus. fungus is either a saprophyte or a parasite. It also parasitizes we humans. So she's right. You're going to see all these symptoms, folks, increase heart disease. Why? Because the five drugs that patient took to the hospital when they had COVID is now duplicated. Five more drugs. They don't get along together, but who cares? They're trying to save your life. And your heart medicine doesn't work anymore. I mean, I've done that before. I've taught you about remdesivir. A remdesivir can offset the effect of your medications. They just don't work anymore. Yeah, but these people are dying of heart disease. Yeah, their heart medications stop working. They're not going to think this way, so we have to. Okay, thank you, Lindsay, for that. Another thing I wanted to tell you, and we'll expound on this if you like. Do any of you drink alcohol? I drank alcohol, plenty of it, when I got back from Vietnam. Oh, it was marvelous. The most therapeutic thing in the world was alcohol. I overdid it. <clears throat> uh, and I drank it for a reason. Um, I didn't, uh, do you remember your first taste of beer? John, you weren't a beer guy, were you? Yeah, you didn't like beer though. Yeah. I remember when I got back from Vietnam and dad gave me a big hug in the kitchen and he said, let me pop you a beer. I loved the effect of it. I didn't care. I could talk louder. I could say things that were normally kept in, uh, and it helped me. But the taste of it. So when I started presenting doctors with scientific data based on mycotoxins and that are commonly in our, uh, in our environment, it was antibiotics. Doctor, did you know penicillium is the mold that Fleming found in 1928? The poison it makes is called penicillin. And there's lots of derivatives of penicillin, hundreds of them. So the doctor will give you some form of penicillin, right? So you're eating a mycotoxin. That's good because mycotoxins kill tiny organisms in tiny doses and bacteria are, or bacterium are tiny 
organisms, okay? My worry is many of you are living on prophylactic antibiotics. You're taking them all the time. Yikes, because we're big organisms. So larger doses can hurt us, no doubt. Antibiotics have been published as inducers of many types of cancer and many types of gut diseases. The cat's out of the bag here, folks, but they can't stop prescribing. Wonderful people, twice my IQ, they're physically addicted to giving you antibiotics, okay? So the other was alcohol, and I thought, well, alcohol, mycotoxin. I'm telling you, folks, ethanol is the mycotoxin of brewer's yeast. Uh, ethanol, or alcohol, we call it. it, when you pick up a drink and drink it, did I read you two years ago on this show, there is no safe level of alcohol. There's no safe level of alcohol. Folks, we know IARC, the International, uh, IA, the International Association of Research for Cancer, that's what it is, IARC, says that alcohol is a known carcinogen. What? And what do we, boy, we see ads on football games, drink that alcohol. Okay, here's a new one that just came out. This is the European Society of Cardiology. A study of nearly 108,000 people has found that people who regularly drink a modest amount of alcohol are at an increased risk of atrial fibrillation. Uh, atypical heartbeats. You're sitting there watching TV with your remote in your hand, boom, 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 and then out of the blue, boom, 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 boom. <coughs> what was that? Atypical ventricular contractions or atrial uh, fibrillation. So does it shock, folks, it shocks them. Does it shock you that a cup of poison a night might make the ticker go awry on you? Does it shock you that kidney disease is increased with alcohol or, or that antibiotics mimic cancer or induce cancer? Does it shock you? I think it's 60 milligrams of, uh, oh, what was the given? A strychnine. I studied strychnine one time. 60 milligrams to 100 milligrams, a little tiny amount, will induce death quite quickly. Um, I think what we're doing with alcohol is analogous to taking three milligrams a day of strychnine. At some time, it's going to become 100 milligrams. It's going to catch up on us. Please, I stopped, and if I can stop, anybody could stop. I enjoyed going out with friends, having a, a, a glass of red wine or a beer, um, and I liked what it did to me, uh, to my brain, more than what it did to my body. Right? Sometimes I got full, uh, so full of yeast and mold that sometimes I'd go to bed and the night I drank a drink, when I was cutting it out, maybe on a Friday night, go out with our neighbors, have a glass of beer, and I'd sweat that night. And I started putting one and one together. I'm up to here with mold in my body, which is now kind of why I'm studying reishi mushroom. If I'm still, if I have mold in my body, wouldn't like, treat like. Okay. So just keep that in mind. There's no safe limits of alcohol, says one study. And now drinking just a drink a day increases your risk of these atrial fibrillations by almost 20%, one in five. Just be careful with alcohol. If you could lay it down, that'd be great. Okay, that'd be great. Now, <clears throat> you have asked, I got this Doug question, tell me about citric acid. Wow. Thank you for that question. There were actually several of you that asked that question. And so I kind of went in with both feet. I got to tell you something, guys. I'm going to give you some facts. You formulate your own opinion at the end of these facts. Fact. The food industry and the FDA says, meh, there's nothing wrong with citric acid. Okay? Today, 99% of citric acid is made via microbial fermentation. Okay, enter that into a Google search. Microbial fermentation. Uh, yeah, only about 1% is derived from natural fr fruit juice. And folks, it's big business. Two million tons a year of this chemical is made. Okay, now I'll tell you who it's made by. Um, when I hear citric acid, my... Br uh, 
I don't know if you did this, John, but my brother always used to walk up to me when no one was looking, you know, mom had her back turned, and he'd take an orange or a lemon peel and squeeze it in my eye. I think citric acid, right? Or monoterpenes, D-limonene in the case of lemon. Um, and man, that stunned, wow, and we'd laugh. And you know, I have pretty good vision for an old man. These are 1.25, so I probably do. Maybe he saved me from the, and he needs glasses. See, that's the amazing thing. But when you hear citric, oh, that's juice from an orange. 99% mm. of the time, it isn't. In other countries, they use wheat. Uh, wheat starch, they use uh, other starters. But they both, in U.S., we use corn because it's available and it's cheap. And I don't know if it's GMO corn. I would guess if it's cheap, but I don't have any idea. Get this, the black, a black mold called Aspergillus niger is fed sugar and ferments into citric acid and then a few other potassium and calcium and a few other chemicals are added to it. The sugars that are used for citric acid can be derived from cane sugar, corn, or wheat. In the U.S., citric acid, citric acid is most often derived from corn since it's a subsidized crop and it's cheap. It is used as an acidifier and a tart flavoring agent. What are those, remember those things, John, when we were younger and you guys are probably kids? Uh, sweet tarts? Citric acid, big time, okay? Think about, about two million tons of citric acid is produced in the U.S. alone every year. It is manufactured by Pfizer, uh, a biopharmaceutical giant once allied with Monsanto, as well as Archer Daniel Midland and Cargill. Cargill. Now you know that. Aspergillus niger is perhaps the most important fungus used in biotechnology. It's also one of the most commonly encountered fungi contaminating foods and feeds in our cattle and occurring in soil and indoor environments. I told you that Aspergillus, Penicillium, and Fusarium are three of the most common molds in your ducting system in your home. There's Aspergillus. I think there are 80 species of Aspergillus and Aspergillus niger has, I think, a total of 17 or 19 species, two of which they're a little concerned about. <clears throat> uh, many of the uh, industrial applications have been given GRAS status, generally recognized as safe. However, Aspergillus niger has the potential to produce two groups of potentially carcinogenic mycotoxins, fumonisin and acrotoxin. By the way, A. IARC, International uh, Association of uh, Research into Cancer. This is a big organization. They're big in Europe. They're big here. And they have identified known human carcinogens, and those are the aflatoxins made by Aspergillus mold, but not Aspergillus niger. I think it's Aspergillus parasiticus, uh, maybe Aspergillus flavus, I forget. But those two tend to make a known human carcinogen. Then you dip down to probably poisonous, could probably cause cancer in humans. And that's when you get into these two. Uh, fumonisins, made by fusarium molds, I believe, and acrotoxins, made by Aspergillus niger. Aspergillus niger makes some of the fumonisins and makes a lot of acrotoxin. Or so they say. Folks, I read papers yesterday that had conflictions. One, because I'm thinking, hold on. This stuff is in everything. Um, is it possible that there are carcinogenic materials? Well, from 2002 and, and non-industrial, Aspergillus niger were studied for pathogenic mycotoxins. Fumonisins B2, B4, B6 were detected in 81% of the Aspergillus niger and acrotoxin A. It's also called what? Acrotoxin A is also called deoxynevalenol, D-O-N. It's also called what? Vomitoxin. Guess what it makes the animals do, okay? Uh, and acrotoxin A in 17%, while 10% of all the strains tested 400, so 40 of them found both, uh, uh, acrotoxin and fumonisin. Wow. Now here's where we get into these. Citric acid is found in a growing number of products. Soda pop, wines, you know? Uh, snacks and candies, diet and nutritional products, supplements, 
pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, household cleaners, detergents, frozen foods, sauces and seasonings, dairy products, ice creams, pet foods, soups, canned food, breakfast uh, food items. There are many natural products that include this form of corn-based uh, aspergillus niger and citric acid. So, uh, Dr. Axe, I don't know if you guys know Dr. Axe. Uh, I, I know his friend, um, the, you know, his partner in crime, and I think the world of him. And uh, Dr. Axe says this. Now, understand, go with me here. If you don't know fungus, and Jordan Rubin does, his, his partner. If you don't know fungus, you don't know what you're printing here, okay? You think this citric acid is like the FDA would think. It's the greatest thing in the world, okay? Dr. Axe says this. Here are the pros, the potential pros to citric acid. It may have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. It has alkalinizing effects. So, uh, you know, if you're very acid, it can move you... I haven't seen the report, but he says it can move you into more alkaline. <clears throat> may improve endothelial function, cell function. May help prevent kidney stones. <clears throat> but here, my big potential con would be if we're using GMO corn and Aspergillus niger, uh, if it's a pathogenic Aspergillus form, like its brothers are, other forms of Aspergillus, then that's my red flag. Uh-oh, be careful. But here's what he said. May irritate the skin. If you don't know mycotoxins, may irritate the skin. Often made with GMO ingredients, like the corn. <clears throat> Might worsen digestive pains. Why would that be? And may be linked to mold reactions. Okay, good for him. I like him. I don't know him. I've never spoken to Dr. Axe. Uh, but uh, I liked his feedback. He has some good reports on this. Folks, if you, uh, the FDA, I don't believe there are many people, if any, with our, um, any of our three letter, you know, EPA or the CDC or the FDA, I don't think there are people who understand mycotoxins can induce serious harm. Not once. The first time you were three days old, you took your first antibiotic, it didn't induce cancer. You have to build up with these products in your body over extended periods of time. Oh, John, let me know what the time is when you get a chance there. And, uh, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things on Thursday. How many of you have tummy problems, right? Bloating, belching, gas, constipation, diarrhea. Well, here's some amazing... Here's an amazing headline. Researchers discover the cause of irritable bowel syndrome. They know the cause? I think you'll get a kick out of this. Thursday I'll open with that and a couple other things that I didn't get a chance to last Tuesday. <clears throat> Folks, I want to, effective today, I think it's real important that I tell you this. Um, I have quickly become apolitical. And many of you, I get 12 to 20 a day. I think, I don't know how many friends I have, but on Facebook and YouTube, it's maybe 80 to 100,000. And thank you for being my friend. Um, but I get a dozen little video clips a day, and some of them are redundant. Like, I'll get 12 and 10 of them are exactly the same. Thank you for caring enough to send me those. I've decided uh, that year in my life is gone. I want to go back. I, I pledged to do this show for two reasons. In hopes that one of you would be led into doing this when I'm gone. Or ten of you, I hope. But one of you would say, I want to take that over. And I want to absorb everything I'm learning. And number two, to disseminate information that I used clinically. If I was a researcher, a researcher doesn't go into a clinic. He never examines a patient. Or, or the patient comes back and says, you know, Doug... My psoriasis is so much better, but my migraine's gone. Could your diet and Nystatin have done that? Folks, my mind popped off. Every week I was at these hospitals with these doctors. They would send me the patients they couldn't help get better. And not all of them, but a lot of them. They couldn't believe we got them better. How? Starve fungus and kill it. Fungus is a huge problem. 
politics, um, I'm just out of that field. I don't, uh, look, I'm going to be neutral, and therefore you don't really want my feedback on this vaccine or remdesivir. I'm going to kind of leave all of that. I've tried to help you as best I can, <clears throat> and I know what I'm going to do. And I encourage all of you to find your thumbprint when it comes to this politics. I think the business of fear is huge. Why it's being propagated on us, I don't have any idea. But I was so fearful in 1970, 50 years ago now, that, you know, there was a propensity to wet yourself. You were so scared with bullets and grenades and uh, helicopter rides, felt like you were going to fall out. Um, I'm over that. That was 50 years ago. Kind of interesting as a 20-year-old. Not interesting at all. I went through a year of it, so I'm done with this. I'm going to let go and let God. You know, that's, that's what I'm doing for the future. So thank you for thinking about me. But uh, I'm going to entrench myself in this, hoping to pull some of you along. The ultimate goal of this live show, two and a half hours a week, is to hope that those of you watching someday when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Someday, you'll get it. You'll be symptomatic enough, you'll be sick enough to say, who was that quack I watched? Doug Kaufman. Now, I'm going to try his diet, and I'm going to put myself on caprylic acid and beta-glucan and all these great things that Doug took. Um, now, aspergillus mold, I was born and raised Catholic. John, do you have that graph? I put this on TV a, a year ago or so. This is an aspergillus that a Catholic priest uh, uses on the left. You've seen that. I guess he fills it with holy water and he walks out and he uh, uh, sprays that on the audience, uh, his people. On the, it was named in 1700s as, after the aspergillus mold. The aspergillus has little tiny holes in it that the holy water comes out of. And look at the aspergillus mold. Those are spores containing mycotoxins uh, that come out of the aspergillus mold. So when I talk about aspergillus niger or parasiticus or flavus, um, that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, John. That is how the aspergillus in the Catholic Church got its name. Isn't that fascinating? I always want to bring you a wow while I'm doing this. Okay. Boy, okay, th you started with something I don't really know. When purchasing magnesium, do you prefer oxide, citrate, gluconate, complex, or something else? I'm not certain which is the best supplement. Okay, let me, let me tell you. Um, there is a magnesium... Would it be a citrate, I believe? Citrated magnesium you can get in a spray bottle. And I've done everything. I, I've never tried estrogen everything else I've tried. Um, but I bought a bottle of this, sprayed it on my hand, and before I went to bed at night, rubbed it on the bottom of my both feet, slept like a baby. Magnesium sulfate, you haven't mentioned magnesium sulfate, but Epsom salts. When I saw these doctor's patients, and they said to me, I don't sleep at night. There's a reason you didn't sleep in 2020, okay? Fear. If you want to get back to sleep now, um, try uh, half a cup to a cup of Epsom salts. What is it at Walmart? You know, four dollars. Put it in the water, fill it up nice and warm. I've also learned that exercise, maybe doing some poses or push-ups or you know going out in the garage and doing a little lifting or things like that for five or seven minutes, then coming in nice warm bath with Epsom salts in it, magnesium sulfate transdermally can deliver the magnesium into your body that really induces relaxation. Finally, I told them if those didn't work, and I gotta tell you, seven of 10, that worked. Then I tried something called valerian root tea. It's fairly new, well, it's been around forever. My uh, knowledge of it was fairly new and limited 35 years ago when I was working out here at the hospital. But for the other three in 10, home run. Nice glass of valerian root tea, little bit of honey in it, drink it down, and uh, that's very, very relaxing. So I don't know about the gluconate and oxide. Uh, I do know that 
Um, you know, the citrate, I think, topically on the bottom of my feet, I experimented with it. I never had a real problem going to sleep. I, I slept in Vietnam. Uh, nobody could believe it. But um, the magnesium sulfate, Epsom salts, if you have a problem, try that tonight. Half a cup to a cup in your bath water, nice and full. Towel yourself off, get your jammies on, and sleep. Okay? <laughs> Who wrote me this? Um, it's got to be one of my friends. I'm wondering if you would allow these on the Kaufman 1 or Kaufman 2. They're on a vitamin container. Gelatin, purified water, extra virgin olive oil, glycerin, yeah, vegetable, starch, extra virgin olive oil, seaweed isolate, uh, microcrystalline cellulose, silicone dioxide, monoglyceride oil, vegetable capsules, cellulose gum, cellulose gum, Sodium bicarb, yeah. Cellulose, natural uh, lemon flavor. You know, natural lemon flavor. How about cutting one lemon and squeezing it in there? Uh, magnesium stearate from a vegetable source mixed to coferols. Those are vitamin E's. Uh, rosemary, uh, uh, scorbal palmate, natural lime flavor, natural caramel, and it goes on and on and on. Let's see, carnauba wax. Uh, lycopene, yeah. Contains fish, sardine. Actually, I got to tell you, uh, there probably isn't much in this one. I have read some. I told you these are one, two, fives. So I carry in my briefcase. I carry a one five zero. Oh. It's called my health food store glasses. There was the nicest couple. My wife and I were, uh, drove to Austin, and we always stop in Temple, Texas. There's a big health food store there, and we pick up some food for the grandkids and the kids and ourselves if we're going to stay a couple of days. And there was a couple that pulled up in a nice, beautiful white car, and uh, he couldn't get out. He was hanging on to the thing, and he's probably my age. And uh, so, I, and I had a mask on. You know, you got to wear a mask. So I uh, said, can I help you? And she said, oh, you know, thanks. And I went over to the side of the car, and with that, I said, this is ridiculous, having a mask on. So I pulled my mask off. Oh, you're that guy on TV. Um, so I get to meet people all the time, usually in health food stores. When I was at the airport, I got used to wearing a ball cap because uh, people would come up to me, and I kind of run through an airport. I used to get, I haven't flown in a long time and don't want to, but I... Uh, I who is that? Uh, O.J. Simpson used to run to the airport, Hertz counter, you know. That's kind of like me at the airport. I'm always a little bit late running from my car, going through security, and then boom, I got on the airplane. Um, I use my 150s to read labels that some of you send me. And uh, I've got to tell you, just based, you now know I'm a newbie, citric acid. And then I got to thinking, when I went through that list, you guys, canned goods, don't eat them. Breakfast foods, don't eat them. I'll eat a grapefruit. Soups, nope. Pet food, well, I get into that once. No. Dairy products, ice creams. I like yogurt, goat uh, yogurt. Sauces and seasonings, frozen foods, household cleaners, detergents, cosmetics. Well, I guess I have to on TV. Pharmaceuticals, nada. Uh, diet and nutritional products, yeah. Uh, nutritional products. Uh, snacks and candies, no. Uh, diet sodas, wines, none of that. So my exposure to citric acid is probably minimal compared to most people. If you're eating the standard American diet, you're getting a lot of this stuff in you. I've got to tell you, whoever wrote me that, thank you, John. Whoever wrote me that, that isn't, that might be one of the best I've ever seen. That might be one of the best I've ever read, so thank you. I'm wondering if you would allow these on the Kaufman 1 or 2 diet. Yeah. Can you imagine the amount of rosemary oil extract in a supplement, in a little tiny supplement? Um, it, it, some people are so worried about what's in their little tiny multi, and then they go home and have two glasses of wine before they go to bed, and they get a sandwich for lunch and breakfast cereal in the morning. So sometimes our priorities are a little bit different. I'd worry much less about this than can you tell me what's in a sandwich. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. <clears throat>
Good. Uh, UTIs cause bladder spasms, wanting to start the Kaufman diet. Uh, I think that's a good idea. UTIs are urinary tract infection. Bladder spasms are miserable and hurt. I used to, you know, these doctors, I used to counsel men and women, by the way, with UTIs and uh, bladder spasms. Do follow the Kaufman One Diet. Do me a favor. Pick up some cranberry juice, non-sweetened cranberry juice, and dilute it and drink a good amount of it. Uh, you know, I'd try and get through 50 ounces, maybe 40 to 50 ounces a day of that for a few days and see if that and eating the proper foods doesn't cut the infection, be they bacterium or be they fungi, in the bladder. You're thinking the right way. I'm really proud of you. You're thinking the right way. What can I do about this problem? Um, thank you. Jesus. Hi, Jesus. Hey, Doug. Can you please name some natural antifungals my wife can take? She has been having MS symptoms, is doing the Kaufman diet, still has some symptoms. Her doctor refused to prescribe her antifungal, suggested her go back on MS medication. She refused them because they make her feel so horrible. Jesus, on behalf of those doctors, I apologize. They know not what they do. Multiple sclerosis, the myelin sheath disease. Um, type into a search engine tonight, MULT or MS, a chronic mycotoxicosis. Uh, Dr. Mercola and I became friends, you know, 25 years ago when he was relatively new. He was on my TV show when I first started it. Oh, he was a hoot. And he thanked me for helping grow his website as quick as it went. I, I had quite a following. And uh, Joe Mercola, that was the first thing he published for us. And it's probably got you know, half a million hits on it. Is multiple scler uh, sclerosis a chronic mycotoxicosis? In other words, does fungus cause MS? I have then spoken to neurologists. I have friends who are neurologists. I have given symposiums to doctors speaking about neurotoxins that induce uh, uh, myelin sheath disorders, ALS, MS, that induce um, uh, nerve cell damage. They're neurotoxic antibiotics. We've known penicillin was neurotoxic since 1945. I have the original paper. Shh. Doctor, you put my child uh, on penicillin and his behavior just, again, impossible. Okay, so here's what I do. The Kaufman, okay, if this were me, if I suffered from advancing multiple sclerosis, here's what I would do. Isn't that hard to say, multiple sclerosis? Your mouth just moves and moves. Here's what I would do. I would starve. If this is a fungal, see, fungi are poisonous to the myelin sheath. No one's ever said, well, look at the sheath covering your nerve is eroding. Okay, Doc, why? Well, we don't know. I love those three words. It makes trillions of dollars a year. We don't know. I wouldn't accept it. I would go on PubMed and pull two or three papers that proved it. Um, so we've got to starve it if it is fungus. And then the, the Sporinox or Diflucan, yeast fungus, that I believe... A doctor would be justified uh, based on science. It's out there. And it was 20 years ago when Dr. Hall and I wrote that article, Is MS a Chronic Mycotoxicosis? It's been out for 20 years. There's now many more papers on this. Shh. He has caprylic acid. You gave me that caprylic acid yesterday, and I am miserable today. Is this a die-off? I wonder how many reactions you and I suffer from are allergic, allergic, and how many are die off from an antifungal? Zinc is antifungal. You know, vitamin D is antifungal. I'd, I'd look for a few antifungals and ask the doctor if she, if you won't give her prescription antifungals, we used to do it for two weeks. In two weeks, Jesus, they know. They follow my diet, go on a big, strong antifungal, and usually within five to ten days, they'd wake up one morning and start crying. Oh my gosh, 
I have range of motion. My back doesn't hurt. My depression is clearing. It's very exciting. Then off they go, off the medications, because there are side effects to these chemicals that we call medications. And we would put them on natural herbs and things of that sort. That was my job. Um, look, um, you know, um, hang in there. Be tough. Try this for a month and see if you don't see her sevens and eights becoming twos and threes. In the course of a few months, wow, we're having more two and three days now. MS is a degenerating myelin sheath covering the nerve disease. That which took years for, if it is a fungal condition, to eat through, gonna be a while till she really feels better. I hope that helps. Exercise, um, a, a good physical therapist I would recommend. Okay, uh, thank you, Jesus, appreciate the letter. Dr. Wong said I should have my melanoma lesion excised, but the oncologist is recommending I have lymph nodes behind my knees and in the groin removed. I don't like the idea of doing this because it causes lymphedema and other bad side effects. What do you know about the effects of removing the lymph nodes? So the thinking, this is probably my friend David Wong. Did I send you to him? Um, David is a, wow, David and I got old together. Um, uh, David was trained both in Eastern and Western, uh, you know, uh, medicine. He said I should have the lesion excised, but the oncologist, oh boy, I, I see this is a tough one. I'm talking, I don't want to talk against either doctor. Let me tell you what the oncologist is thinking. He knows that these cells that might cause melanoma, I've done stories on the fungus linked to melanoma, you probably know that, um, reside in the lymph nodes, right? That in the groin, under your arms, you know, under here. And uh, so what the oncologist is doing with all the, he doesn't know fungus. And so he's recommending take out as much tissue as possible that may harbor these uh, melanocytes, that may harbor cancerous melanoma. And Dr. Wong is saying, why don't you just have the lesion excised and drained and uh, see where we go from here. Um, I can tell you what I do, but that wouldn't be fair, would it? Um, you've got to make your mind up. Who do you trust the most? These are life-altering decisions, aren't they? I mean, these are difficult decisions. Could we not listen to Dr. Wong and get it excised? But again, who's going to excise it if the doctor says no? Um, could we get it excised and see if the lymph tissue is, do they have scans that can tell if melanoma is in these tissues? Are you really following an antifungal program? Are you taking antifungals? Might in a year this thing be behind you? Please God. Um, and so I know, I know exactly what you're going through. You've got one doctor saying do this. And another doctor saying, no, we got to get those lymph nodes behind the knees and the groin removed. Women have intuitive natures. I'm not good. My wife is brilliant at this. I'm not good at this at all. So when it comes to intuitive, should we buy that home? What do you think our offer ought to be? Boing. You know, it goes to her. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, that's a decision you've got to come up with. I may go back to Dr. Wong and explain to him the oncologist wants to pull all this tissue out. Would that behoove me to do? What's your opinion on idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and what can be done? Do you know what the word idiopathic means? It means these four words. We have no idea. We don't know. Idiopathic purpura. Idiopathic uh, fibrosis <clears throat> disease growing in the lungs. The doctor can look at it on x-ray or scan and say, yeah, you have pulmonary lung fibrosis. Looks ugly in there. What causes it? Oh, idiopathic. We don't know. That name, we don't know. Thank you, John. <clears throat> uh, what would I do with it? I'd know the word idiopathic means they don't know why it's there. What's the harm in trying some antifungals? I have friends, as you know, who are pulmonologists who would utilize Spornox for a couple of weeks, then maybe Diaclucan for a couple of weeks. We can go in and do a bronchoscopy and, uh, and uh, see what it is. 
it'd be so simple. What's, what's inducing the fibrosis? Well, we don't know. Let's call it idiopathic. We can find out, right, Doc? Hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am not a doctor. <laughs> That's a good way to start it. I am not a doctor, but after living with mycotoxins and what they did to my body, I almost always think fungus first. And I know real quick when I'm in the area with fungus or have something not on the Kaufman diet, mycotoxins made me ill and it took years to get the me back. That's a testimonial. That's a testimonial. I tend to be, look, having gone through this myself, should I pick this up, telemarketer? while I'm on the air. Um, um, I got through this like you did. I'm not a doctor either. Folks, someday we're going to do a show called The Doctor in You. Uh, um, I have a friend who suffered horribly from tummy problems. Um, she went to a doctor and uh, uh, there was a nurse practitioner at the doctor who examined her and said, okay, um, I think we need to get, and she's losing a lot of fluids, I think we need to get you rehydrated, good idea, and I think we need to give you an antibiotic. I don't want to take an antibiotic. Can I rehydrate you? Uh, yes, you can, 1,000 cc's of sodium chloride, and I'm you know, on the way to being rehydrated. We want you to go home, drink a lot of water, urinate a lot, and so forth. The second visit, well, let's rehydrate, let's rehydrate you again. No, I'd like to try a generalized antimicrobial. What can you do? And they did a technology I love. This is a different kind of a doctor out here in Dallas. My point is she had to tell the doctor, the nurse, who had to ask the doctor to get this done. She knew they did this in their office, but she had to ask two people to get it done, and she was cured. Are we the ones paying the bill? At what time, folks, there is money based on our ignorance? That's what my show is all about. I have no ax to grind with doctors. They're really good people. They were impressionable and had lots and lots of college from professors who taught it their way. Um, they're now people who uh, follow the books. They know they got them because they're following the books. What the pharmaceutical companies taught them in medical training is what they now do. That's called allopathy. But more and more doctors, like my friend, are going a less traditional route, are looking at alternative approaches, right? And that's what she finally said. We talked to her. We knew this doctor. And, we, and uh, she asked for that. It was done the next morning. She wakes up fine and has been fine for three days. You see, this procedure would have gone on and on, and then antibiotics, and then a lot more tummy problems. Um, it's sad to me. That's why I think if I can erase your thinking on a different level. Yeah, I do know stuff, and I have access to one of these. What's that called? Computer. And I can go to PubMed.org. And I can type in, let's see, irritable bowel syndrome and fungus or mycotoxins. And I can take that to my doctor. You've had me on antibiotics for three years. This says fungus causes irritable bowel. Antibiotics fuel fungus. I'm a little upset. Can we try an antifungal? Okay. I get carried away. I'm sorry. I don't know. John no longer puts the name here, and I think that's good. I saw an ad the other day for HPV vaccinations, human papillomavirus, for adults up to age 45. I guess they're running out of children to vaccinate. Uh, wow, my husband passed away Saturday, January 9th, in our home. I actually found him deceased in the tub. It disturbed me that I wasn't able to get an autopsy done because the mortician had started the embalming process, so I prayed to God to grant me peace concerning his sudden death. You know, I've, you can imagine, uh, you know, how many times I've read things like this. Um, without my belief system, you guys, I'd be crying full time. My belief system says you lost him. You're going to do a lot of crying. 
a lot of mourning to do, but you're going to find him. And you two will be back together in a time and a place when there'll be no more pills, no more bathtubs to become deceased in, uh, no more uh, additives to foods, and you'll be together forever. I'm so sorry at your loss. Gosh. Okay, uh, oh, Alice, Elise, or Alice, your friend Alice here. I've just completed my health and life coaching certification specializing in fungus. This is because of you, your experiences and research. As I mentioned before, I'm now 25 plus years cancer free. I promo you on this website often now to purchase all these books. Um, congratulations on your graduation. Do me a favor. Uh, What's that? Where can she send her address? I'll sign and send you one of each of the copies of the books as your graduation gift. So you have a nice little library. Um, yeah, thank you, John. Live at Know the Cause, Elise. Is that Elise or Alice? Um, live at Know the Cause. Give me your name and your mailing address, and I'll get these out this week and sign each of them. And what a way for... Uh, you know, hundreds of scientific documents to help you help others. Wow, I love this. That's another one I'm going to keep forever and ever. Amen. I remember one time working with uh, people my age, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s over at the hospital, and uh, their kids coming in and being so happy. Mom, you know, wasn't sick anymore. And then the child went to school and uh, took up nutrition. We have very limited folks. I've got to tell you, what are you going to be, a dietitian? You know, um, um, there are such limitations to where we can go. Um, I've worked with so many dietitians who thought that avocados were going to kill us and that green jello is what people in hospitals should eat. Not all of them. They're beginning to come out of their shells now, which I think is kind of neat. But good for you. Health and Life Coach Certification. I'm going to send you a gift because of that. Congratulations. Hey, Doug, what's your take on a new mom in her 20s who craved sugar even before pregnancy, had joint pains during pregnancy, and delivery got worse? Her MD did blood work and markers for inflammatory autoimmune diseases, and they were very high. Um... Prescribed steroids, which interrupts breastfeeding, and just added Plaquenil. What natural can be done to help? I guess the name of my TV show, uh, Know the Cause. This started uh, even before she was pregnant. A young teenager, young girl in her 20s, probably exercising, feeling great, and eating cereal every morning. And once you get 21, a drink every night because cardiologists say that's good for you. Um, could it catch up with you that quickly, and could it induce mycotic arthritis? Sure, it's well published. Mycotic arthritis is a real problem. That's when fungus begins growing in the joints. Um, and so the answer is drugs, drugs, drugs. And he's, look, he's trying to help her. He's a good man, good woman, who learned through their medical training that the answer to everything is not knowing the cause. You were taught you're not smart enough to know the cause. You're smart enough to reach in your right pocket and write down something. Not one thing, two things. Uh, if she weren't breastfeeding, I would recommend that we uh, you know, take some time and begin the diet and um, begin taking antifungals to see if that cleared it up. But breastfeeding, that's going to be very difficult. I, I don't know why steroids and Plaquenil, they don't worry about that when they're breastfeeding. I guess they know things I don't. My goal would be to understand the etiology. What happened? Did she move into an old home when she was 21 because she loves antiques? Was there mold in that home? Um, what happened? Why would a young girl begin to have joint pains? And then she had a high inflammatory autoimmune uh, disease uh, blood markers, and uh, yeah, so the doctor is believing the blood markers indicate um, 
an autoimmune disease. Could they indicate, like the PSA, like uh, cancer tests, could they indicate fungus also? You know, cancer tumor markers are antifungal markers also. Just blows me away. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you except maybe a Kaufman diet may help her. When she's done breastfeeding, I hope in a few years, um, you know, she can try some antifungals and see if that helps. I just don't know what to tell you. I'll never tell you not to do what a doctor tells you to do because he knows the whole case and I don't. Uh, wow, I'm so sorry. Mm. Mm. Jill, are you implying that it's okay now to eat oranges if grown with no fertilizer and other toxins? No. Citric acid, we are led to believe that grapefruits and organic oranges are where we get citric acid. Nonsense. We get it from the fermentation of the black mold called Aspergillus niger uh, and sugar from cornstarch. Uh, so no. The reason I don't have orange on my Kaufman 1 diet, my grandma was diabetic. And I'll never forget old Dr. Westerbeck out in Los Angeles was her doctor. We used to go with her to the doctor. And he'd take her blood, and he, she was commanded to carry an orange in her purse, which I thought was funny. Should she go into a hypo-insulin situation, uh, grab that orange, tear it apart, and eat it. Enough sugar in her blood, boom, she's out of that condition. Uh, so we get a lot of sugar when we eat oranges. And that's why it's not on the coffin one diet. It doesn't have to do with... Uh, with the toxins in it. Yeah, I don't have an allopathic doctor. My question is, can I have a prescription for an Istatin? <laughs> How can I have a prescription for an Istatin or a different type of antifungal medicine? If you don't have an allopathic doctor, what I would do, might cost you 75 bucks, I'd go to one of these doctor uh, businesses in every city, and I'd say, I think I have a fungal condition, I'd like to try, I'd, I'd print Doug's, it's free, it's on my website, uh, getting started, doctor's fungal protocol, because most doctors don't know what fungus, that it can be systemic, and I'd take it into the doctor and say, this is a friend of mine, I listened to him, there it is, thank you, John, go down to doctor's fungal protocol at the bottom, and voila, we have the uh, instructions for physicians. It's two pages, you can print them off, take them to the doctor and say, could I get Nystatin or could I get an antifungal? What food product has citric acid? What's the problem caused by it? I very rarely eat corn. Boy, uh, as I spoke about today, almost every process and canned food has citric acid in it. Is it okay? I'm going to land this the way I took off. That isn't for me to decide. That's for you to decide. I don't get in touch with it very often because I don't eat corn and I don't eat boxed or canned foods. I hope this helps. Thank you guys. Are you familiar with mast cell activation? Man, I am. And how about if we jump off on mast cell activation on Thursday just for you? Okay, God bless you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.